There it is. Look at it. Oh, the icon is so cool. <laughs> anyway, how's it going, everybody? My name is Tentacle, and welcome to something very, very special. The indie mobile game Sky Children of the Light has finally been ported to the Nintendo Switch, and I'm going to be showing it off for you guys in this stream. Unfortunately, this game is very massive, so it's going to take a while for it to download. Hmm. I'm not sure what other games I can play in the meantime, because... This download will be paused if I use online stuff. So I guess I could just chat with you guys for a while. So welcome Ume, Monster Shroom, and Professor Sky Sensei to the stream. Hope you guys are all having good days, or nights, depending on where you live. Now then, let's see. My plan for this stream is very simple. At the start, I'm going to be playing through on an alt account that I created right here. You can see it's conveniently titled Moth. And for those who don't know, veteran players refer to newer Sky players as Moths because, for some reason, new players always draw to veteran players like Moths to a Light. So, instead of just jumping right in with both feet on my account, I think it would be better for me to play through this on an alt account first to show you guys how it works. You've been waiting for this release for so long. Oh yeah, me too, Professor. <clears throat> Excuse me, Professor. Sky was a very important game for me last year. As you guys probably could imagine, the whole mess that happened last year really rocked my world. It was scary. A lot scarier for me than most people, considering how I process some stuff. So, knowing that I could retreat to this game on my phone and just have a place to escape to, relieve my stress, all that stuff... It was just so comforting. And I've even met some very nice people through it as well. Speaking of which, after I finish up with my alt account playthrough, I will deactivate the account. So, don't bother trying to befriend me on there. Wait until I start playing on my main account. Anyway, welcome... Twisted Retro, I'm surprised I could read that, Prox, and ShinyGamer70 to the stream as well. How are you guys doing? Let's see. Seven minutes left. We should be fine. Shouldn't take too long. Oh, by the way, I should mention... I am currently working on a highlight video from my recent Ninjala stream that I did on Thursday. Last week. Just like I promised. And I'm trying to make the most out of my editing capabilities as well. So, because I'm editing this heavily compared to my past few videos, I'll probably set it as a premiere when it's done. I only use premieres if I'm especially proud of whatever video I'm working on. And after that, I'll probably stop all my non-Let's Play videos and work on that Splatoon 2 Hot Takes video I promised you guys. Because... You guys have been waiting for that for long enough, and I've barely gotten any work done on it. Mainly because I've been distracted with other content so much. 
But I promise you, once that Ninjala video is released, Splatoon 2 Hot Takes will be the only non-Let's Play video that I work on for a while, until it's done. I had to do the same thing with my cover of That's Amore by Vic Vian, which unfortunate, unfortunately got copyright claimed. I posted it on Twitter. Anyway. Animal Crossing was your game that helped you through last year? Yeah, that was that was a pretty good game at the time. Unfortunately, I think Animal Crossing has gotten too samey over the past year. That's not to say it's bad. Far from it. It's a great game. But I just... I just see no reason to make content for it anymore. I'm still playing it in my spare time. A lot. I just... There's no point in making content for this anymore until something new happens. Or, better yet, maybe I could finally make content for all the holidays that I missed in the game last year. Because I pretty much stopped making content for Animal Crossing after the Halloween event. Anyway... You couldn't exactly attend that stream since you were in the Pilot of Chaos at the time? I'm not sure what you mean there, Prox. But yeah, you're more than welcome to check out the video. I actually started using the Replay Buffer feature in Streamlabs OBS to make my highlights. And I'm going to be doing that from now on whenever I decide to make highlight videos of my streams. But this one, for example, I won't. I just want to enjoy myself, you know? Also, welcome Kyrus and Taylor. Hope you guys are doing well. I'm just trying to... bide time until... this thing finishes downloading. Twelve more minutes. Is the game downloading for you too, Shiny Gamer? You found your first moth at the at the aisle and you're wondering if it's a switch moth? <laughs> yeah. That is that is kind of funny. When I was candle running in Sky yesterday, I already saw a huge influx of new players. So, it must have released for them on the Switch in other countries across the globe. Or wait. Hmm. Is it either... It was either yesterday or today that the rollout started. Hmm. Whatever. You released your fourth video of your Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series? Nice! I actually do need to work on episode 5 of my Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series at some point. Like I said earlier, I will be still working on Let's Play videos, so that way there's not too much of a gap between content. I'm glad I actually decided to make Let's Play series. It's nice to play through games in my collection that I haven't really tried genuinely yet. That's how I felt with Crash Bandicoot and Kirby's Adventure. Anyway, I'm sorry that there's, like, no music or anything. I thought this would be finished downloading really quickly. But it is almost done. So maybe we can finally get started soon? The anticipation is killing me. Come on, game. You can do it. I know you can.
And there we go. Holy mackerel, it is time. Now let's see if my strategy works. Oh, what? So you're telling me I have to link a Nintendo account to my alt if I want to play this? I'm sorry, but I'm not going to do that. Well, say goodbye to the alt account that never existed. Everybody say goodbye, Moth. Let me see what let me see a goodbye moth in the chat. But that's fine. No need to worry. I can just play through it on my main account as if I were a new player. It's all good. This first stream is just going to be my way of showing you guys the wonder that is Sky. Anytime you want to load? Okay. Gotta skip all the necessary stuff. There we go. I can already tell the graphics are pretty good. And we just have a scene of the water. Welcome Swifty Soft to the stream. Anyway. Refresh. Fine. Well, here it is, guys. I can already tell that the frame rate is much worse. Which is fine, I guess. Now let's see. How can I... There we go. All right, that works. What is this game? This Swifty Soft is Sky Children of the Light. You can make it 60 FPS? Really? In the graphics option, okay. Pardon me if I Okay, there we go. 60 FPS. Whoa, that's much better. Although I may keep it on 30 FPS for a while anyway. Okay, so you hold B to glide. Press Y to interact with things. And, by the way, guys... If you're wondering why there's no music playing, it's because this is the hub world of the game. Music doesn't play here. You have to actually enter a world to hear stuff. But that's fine. We can make it work. Anyway. Is this game new to me or have I played it before? Oh, I have played it before. I don't know if you were here for that, Swifty Soft, but I have played this game since last year. I did not used to look like this. In fact, my avatar is actually a lot taller than the average Sky Children. Is the Nintendo Switch Pack now available? I don't know there, Watashi Waren. I literally just downloaded the game, so... I can't say for certain that it is, although, I'm pretty sure it might be. I'm probably going to download it later, after the stream is over. But anyway, I will be more than happy to explain this game to you, Swifty Soft, or anybody who doesn't know what the heck this game is. Okay, so... The plot is pretty simple at first. You are playing as a child of light. That is literally your character's official name, but everyone calls them Sky Children. And you have fallen out of your home in the sky. So now you have to travel through seven different worlds 
and find your way back home. And along the way, there are certain collectibles and other characters that you can interact with. But this first world, the Isle of Dawn, is like your tutorial world. So, press B to jump. You can press R to skip cutscenes, although I'm not gonna do that for now. With the stars united, our light was infinite. And together, we lived in harmony. It has been a while since I've actually viewed these cutscenes, so forgive me. Oh! I did it again. I pressed that by accident. My bad. But yeah, this is the general story of the game. This is showing how all the characters lived in the sky. But darkness came, and the stars fell. And with their light, we faded away. So now we go over here, press B to jump. A long time has passed, now we call to you. Go forth, child. Return our spirits to the stars. Yes, that is one of the collectible things that you can find in this game. Scattered across each of the first six worlds are spirits. They're usually hidden in... Not really so much in plain sight, so much as it is they're just really well hidden. There's not really much to say other than that. So once you find them, you'll have to complete some sort of task or even a mini game to get them to befriend you. And then they will return to the sky. And you can press A to call as well. I don't have the default call equipped right now, so that's why I sound a little different than your character might. I don't think you get the call that I have equipped until World 6, so yeah. I do believe, though, in the very next world after this one, you'll be able to get your first call. I'll see if I can show it off. I know the audio might be a bit quiet, but can you guys still hear it? Am I too loud? Is the game too loud? Or too quiet? Just let me know. Because I want to make this experience as enjoyable for you guys as possible. No matter what. What exactly is the call? It's sort of a way to find your way around these worlds. Whenever you press A to call, sometimes other characters, or excuse me, other players, will be marked with a star symbol. And you can find your way to them. Calling is also very useful in situations like this. This is the first spirit that you can encounter in the game. If you're a new player, then the outline for the spirit will be blue here. But since I've already encountered this spirit, their outline is gray. So you press Y to interact with them. And now we have to follow this spirit and relive its memories. So what that means is, you just have to get within range of the spirit. And it'll automatically warp to the next location.
And as you can see on the left of the screen, there's a little bar showcasing how far you've gotten in the memory. And once you've retrieved the last memory, the spirit will teleport to its physical body, and then you have to free it. Depending on the spirit, you might get a little cutscene showcasing how they got their memories, I guess. Some of them are pretty funny. Some of them are cute. It's just... It just all depends on what spirit you get. Anyways, afterwards, they will always teach you a new expression. Like this. The Pointing Pilgrim is this spirit's name. And as you could imagine, he gives you the pointing expression. This spirit waits with an offering of gratitude at the elder's temple. And with that, the way forward is opened up. Every so often, you might encounter gates, like, wait for it, this, that will halt your progress unless you've found a certain number of spirits within the world that you're in. So, this, for example, means you need one spirit in World 1 to go through. That's probably the easiest gate that you can find. Anyway, you see this little shower of light right here that's right in front of my character? Normally, there would be something called winged light standing there. Winged light always appears as another child of light, just like you. And to collect it, you just walk up to it and press Y to interact with it. You collect winged light throughout the course of the game, and it's sometimes hidden in plain sight like this, other times it's hidden just as cleverly as a spirit. And... How do I put this? Oh yeah. The more winged light you collect, the higher and farther you'll be able to fly. And you fly by holding B. In some situations like this, you may be automatically put into glide mode, but other times you can press R to switch to hover mode. Also, what's up, Hyper? Anyway, right here, see on the bottom right of the screen where it has the press R indicator? That's how you switch to hover mode. I usually find myself using glide mode the most. Anyway, I do believe there's another spirit over here. Oh. Whoops. This one needs... This one needs two spirits to encounter. So that means we missed one. Can't believe it. But that's fine. To my credit, it has been forever since I visited World 1, so... I might be a little bit rusty on where everything is. There is another spirit right there, but I do want to show off. These red candles. If you find these in a world and press Y to interact with them, they'll give you light fragments. And if you collect enough light fragments, then you'll get a candle. And you can use candles to buy items from spirits to either help you out in your adventure, or customize your avatar, like mine. However, some cosmetic items are limited time, so that'll only mean you can encounter, or excuse me, 
you can only get those cosmetics during certain season events. You're gonna be playing Sky for yourself soon. Ooh, I hope you enjoy, Hyper. It's a good thing we're already friends in this game, otherwise we would both be up a creek. Anyway, check this out. Hang on. That right there is another player. So if you ever encounter another player in the game, you can press Y to offer your candle and light up theirs and you'll be able to see what the other player looks like. And it's very nice, it's a common courtesy in this game to greet any new player that you come across. And if someone greets you, it's even more nice to return the greeting. But yeah, I'll be more than happy to help you out, Moth. Anyway, come on. Let's go. Oh great, now I'm lost. Sorry there, friend. It's this way. There's that spirit from earlier. I'll come back to that after I direct this lost moth. Are you there? Nice. Anyway. We need to go this way now. Because... Straight through here is the entrance to the Elder's Temple. Just like the game said. And holy mackerel, it actually loaded the zone properly. I can't believe it. Every temple in each world looks different, so the World 1 temple is pretty basic to start off, but some of the later ones look really, really cool, I gotta say. Oh, hang on a second. Ugh, sorry about that, had to scratch my nose. I'm still a little sick from my allergy fit yesterday. Anyway, once you get to the end of the temple, there will be this circle of light here. And a candle. You have to light it up to activate the circle, then press Y to sit down in it. And every spirit that you've rescued in the world will be transported to the sky, complete with a cool cutscene. These cutscenes also introduce you to the elders of each world. So, for example, this one is the elder from World 1. So, with our help, the Isle Elder is able to restore his mask that he wears. Oh, the stream lagged for a second there. Are you guys okay? Anyway, once you're done with restoring the altar's light, as the game says, you are able to view the constellation. So this, as you can see, is the constellation for the Isle of Dawn. There are three spirits that need rescuing. And the one that we passed by earlier is this one, I think. Nope, not you. Then it's you. The Rejecting Voyager. The third one... The Ushering Stargazer is somewhere else in the world, but for one, I completely forgot where they are. Anyway. 
Yeah, the other character in that cutscene, Swifty Soft, was the the elder of the Isle of Dawn. As I was saying earlier. Every journey through each world in Sky always ends with encountering one of the elders. More specifically, the elder of that world. Anyway. Usually... At the end of each world, you are able to automatically go to the next one. And I'll do that just for the sake of showing it off. But you do have the option to automatically return to the hub world instead. Huh, <laughs> I just noticed. This game may be running at 60 FPS on my end, but I have my stream outputting at 30 FPS. Hopefully, I can get to a point where my computer can handle 60 FPS streams again. I tried to do that during Splatfest in Splatoon 2 back around 2019, and... It failed miserably. My stream kept lagging a lot. Anyway, welcome to Sky. This is your official introduction into the game. This part of the aisle doesn't really have an official name, but here you're free to glide as much as you want. And as you can see, there are several other new players that are doing the same. So I believe through that gateway over there is the entrance to World 2, the Daylight Prairie. And I will be more than happy to show that off. But once we get through World 2, I will be taking a bit of a break to focus on other mechanics of the game. If I have time, I'll see how far I can get with the rest of them. Anyways, here we are, the Daylight Prairie. I always like coming here whenever I need a break from candle running, because more often than not, you're able to meet all sorts of interesting players here. Let's see if any spawn in. I do see we have a few more moths here. There we go. Greet the moth. And World 2 in this game also introduces you to benches. Yeah, there's no, like official name for this, but the way these work is you light up the candle in the middle and while it's burning you can sit down and chat with other players that happen to sit next to you. It's very fun. Oh, don't worry if you're asking a lot of questions, Swifty Soft. That's fine. I knew so many people would have questions, but moth is basically a term of endearment to express or to define new players. As you can see, all of these, since, since all of these players look like this, they're considered moths. It is a term of endearment. There's nothing mean about it. So, don't be surprised if other veteran players start calling you guys moths. As you can probably imagine, this other player looks exactly the same as them over there. And one more thing. The Daylight Prairie also introduces you to this customization room. I call it the closet, just for fun. 
whenever you walk up to here, you can press Y to change whatever cosmetic it shows on the wall. So, in this case, you're able to see what pants you have and change them accordingly. And depending on what you choose, that may also change the color of your avatar's body. But I'll stick with this. This specific pair of pants was exclusive to a seasonal event that unfortunately no longer exists, but you will be able to get other seasonal items in the future if a certain spirit returns as a traveling spirit. Traveling spirits only arrive for a weekend, and their prices are pretty expensive. You'll need a lot of candles to get some of their items. But it is worth it if you haven't gotten to experience whatever the season is. Like, for example, the pants that my avatar is wearing are from the season of prophecy. So, if you want to look up any social media accounts for Sky Children of the Light, official ones that is, They'll tell you when a new traveling spirit has arrived. Or it'll show, show you when you start up the game. Now then. I would like to formally welcome you to the Daylight Prairie. This is your central hub of World 2. That area that we were just in back there way up there, is commonly referred to as a social area. The background music of Sky is really soothing and relaxing. Yeah, that's the goal of this game, honestly. By the way, there's another winged light through this cave. As you can see, there's another little shower of light where it once was. All right. But yeah, that is pretty much the goal of Sky. It's just to create as relaxing of an experience as possible for everybody. Now, I believe over here, there's another spirit that we can encounter. It's the Butterfly Charmer. Ah, there we go. Here he is. So, press Y to interact with it. And right here, you're going to be able to see how each spirit encounter is unique. I'm, I'm trying my best to go really slow here, so that way you guys can soak all of this in. I don't want to be too rushed. Anyway... So now that this is done, we have to free him again. And the butterfly charmer here is your first example of a spirit that doesn't really have a backstory. You just get to learn his butterfly pose expression which is fine but I do like it when the spirits have little backstories anyway let's see oh now then I would like to show you guys two tricks that not very many new players get their first time around right through here if you already have a spirit from the Daylight Prairie, which you should if you've collected the Butterfly Charmer, you can go through here and get a lot of light fragments at once. It's so nice. Now, I believe... Y? X? No. A? No. Oh, there we go. You press L to collect a candle whenever you've collected enough 
light shards for one. You love sliding in this game? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a nice way to get around, although I'm more of a flyer, honestly. Now then, the second thing that most players miss is this. You have to get four spirits in the Daylight Prairie to go through here. I'll go through that later, but for right now, let's press on. There is one last part of the Daylight Prairie that I want to show off before we go there. Because there are a few more spirits over this way. And I'm trying to play through this as a new player would. Actually, hmm, now that I stop and think about it, it might be how many spirits you've collected total instead of how many spirits you've found in that world. I'm honestly not quite sure. That's a little something to look up later, I suppose. I love how I can use all of my Sky Child's emotes to make my commentary more potent now. That's such a nice touch. Anyway, so, as you can see here, these watchtowers are covered by some weird plants. The official name of these plants, for those who are curious, is... Darkness. Yeah. That's their official name. A bit short, but effective. Anyway, your goal here is to... light up the candles that are on the bottom of each little... spire, I guess. And then you'll be able to get transported to the Daylight Prairie Temple. Welcome Pedro Thomas to the stream. Is there a joystick button for lighting? I don't think so. Whenever I've done this already, it's it's saying I have to press Y to interact with things, so if that's what you mean, then, there, yeah, that's probably it. Press Y to use, or excuse me, Windows notifications, get out of here. Press Y to light. There we go. Hopefully that helped you, Pedro. Sorry if it seems like I'm a bit flustered, by the way. I'm just... I've been so excited for this! I've been wanting this for a while. Secretly, if I might add. Mainly because I don't know very many people that play this game. Or I didn't when this game first came out. Anyway... Any of you eagle-eyed viewers in the chat may have noticed... In the bottom right corner of the screen, when we lit that first spire, it showed off another spirit. It's right in here. And by the way, butterflies in this game also restore your light. Pretty much any creature that is made of light does that. And here's our first example of a player that has probably played this game a lot more than most mods. They're short, they've got a differently colored cape, they're carrying a musical instrument, and they've got a different pose. That's how you can easily identify a veteran. How's the music? Or, oh, you're saying, how is it to play music? Oh. So, if you have a musical instrument, like my harp, equipped, then you press X to open the menu, select it, 
And... I guess there are buttons now. This is gonna be awkward. So yeah, I guess... The buttons and control sticks... Control the music now. Whatever. I mean, that's fine, I guess. I'll wait until this guy's done with this spirit so I can show you guys how the path for it actually works. Yeah, Sky can be very weird for people at first. But once you actually get into it, it is a very fun game. No, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm trying to wait and see if that spirit can come back. I don't think he will, though. Let's look. Hmm. Nope, doesn't look like it. Anyway. The long and short of it is... This is where the spirit starts. Then, you're gonna wanna go, I believe, right here. Then, up this hill. And then... All the way at the top is where the spirit waits. And this is actually the spirit that carries the harp instrument. Now for the life of me, I can't remember what this spirit gives you. Oh yeah, that's right. It's the laughing expression. Have a laugh. There you go. Yeah, I see what you mean there, Pedro. Button mapping might be useful during candle running. Now then, there is actually yet another spirit over this way. As you can see, there's a player, a new player at that. Oh, no, wait, they're not new. They're just low on light. So, or not. I was trying to show that if you ever need help from other players or you find a player who's low on light, you can hold A, hold A to do a deep call. That will, that will deliver some sort of pop-up, I guess, to any players who are in the same area as you. And these mantas that you see here are also capable of deep calls because they light up. See? Oh, wait, what am I saying? There's another spirit over here, too. This one's actually an essential one if you want to interact with other players. So, follow him this way. Right there, yes. And right there. I believe this is the wave expression. Or I guess more fittingly, the greeting expression. 
it is kind of funny to view this cutscene while that spire is spinning because it messes with this spirit's model. Normally, this spire would be off. So, the cutscene would look a lot more natural. But yeah, how about that? Anyway, from him, we do in fact get the wave expression. Very nice. And there he goes. There he goes again. All right. Now then. By the way, while we have a second, I might as well mention, if any of you guys do find me while I'm streaming this, during this stream, I guess, or at any other time, feel free to add me. I'll be, I'll be trying my best to keep any of my Switch friends in my best friend list, which I'll show off once we're done exploring the Daylight Prairie. There's a lot of stuff that's still in the hub world that I need to show off. Anyway, through here is another spirit, and this moth is helping me out. Thank you. Oh yeah, that's right. Sometimes a spirit's memory may be trapped under some darkness. So you gotta free it first. Anyways, that was the last memory. So go through here. Free the spirit. And I believe this is the brow wipe expression. Because this guy is the exhausted dock worker. Oh, no? Then it's the yawn expression. Alright. Whoop, hang on a second. I gotta sneeze. Okay, false alarm, no sneeze. But anyway. I'm sorry if I'm going way too fast for you guys to keep up, so feel free to let me know if I do need to slow down. Now let's see, what else have I missed? Anything in this immediate area? I want to say there's something else over here. Bear with me, by the way. It has been a while since I've explored the Daylight Prairie so... deeply, I guess. I believe there's something through here that might be related to another season. Oh, right! It's this room! This one is really special. Because, to progress any further in this room, you need the help of seven other players. It's not very often that you'll, f you'll find players that go through here, unless they're veterans that are candle running. Because there are quite a few candles way up there just past that wall. Looks like we already got five players. We just need two more. Most of these are probably going to be mods. Welcome Fearless Fizz to the stream. Any tips on speeding up game downloads on the Switch? Hmm. I 
don't think I have any fizz. Anyway, right here, this character, this player that's in that bunny mask, there's another example of a veteran player. I think all of the cosmetic items that they're wearing, except for that hairstyle, are from a seasonal event called the Season of Dreams. Anyway, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. We need one more. Anyway, going back to what you were saying, Fearless, the solution might be as simple as get on a better Wi-Fi network. I don't know. Let's see. Let me try a deep call. Well, that didn't work. Uh-oh, the moth is trying to friend me. I don't want that. I am sorry. I'm not going to try and befriend too many noobs here. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. It's not you, it's me. But we do need other people to help us out. I feel so bad for that poor moth, though. I hope they find friends in the other players that are in there. But yeah, if you are able to get seven other players to help you out there, then you'll be able to go to an area above here that has a whole bunch of candles and the ceremonial worshiper spirit. And that offers you, if I can find it, there we go, this expression. It doesn't look like much, but if you hold your candle high up like that with seven other players, then it cre <clears throat> excuse me, then it creates a very big ring of light. Anyway, let's see what else can I Oh, yeah! I almost forgot. That other area at the beginning of the prairie. So, if you ever at any time want to go back to the hub world, you can press X, select this gate, and return to home. Also, welcome back, Swifty Soft. You didn't really miss much. I was just explaining how World 2, the Daylight Prairie, works. But I'm actually going to go back and find another area that I forgot to mention the first time around. This one is really helpful. For new players, anyway. Let me show you. So, if you want to go to this area that I'm talking about, it's just through this ring of clouds and to the right. You'll see it as we fly in. Okay. Now... Right through here. Here it is. Again, like I said, you do need four spirits to go through here. I don't know if that means four from the Daylight Prairie, since that's what this constellation is for. Or just four spirits in total. I want to say it's just in that world, but I may be wrong, like I said before. But anyway... I don't know if this part of the Daylight Prairie has a name. However, 
name or not, you are able to get quite a few extra candles and another spirit in here. So I will be more than happy to show it off. That's the main goal of this stream, honestly. To serve as a guide for new players. And if any of you ever feel lost, I will always keep this stream public. So if you ever need to come back to the first two worlds for any reason, I hope I can be of some assistance to you. Oh yeah, that's right, the bird nest. Now then, here is the spirit I mentioned earlier. And right here, you'll get your first example of some of the craziness that you have to do just to relive certain spirits' memories. Got to do some precision platforming, as it were. Thankfully, if you keep the control stick held in the proper direction, I do believe that helps your Sky Child do precision platforming. Your character will automatically move up small ledges and over small gaps, so no need to worry there. What's more important is that you actually land on the gaps and ledges. Got some more candles over here, very nice. And I honestly don't remember what this spirit gives. I want to say this is your first unlockable call. Yeah, because that's how this spirit got that bird to interact with her. Yeah, that's it, the bird call. I might just wear this for the rest of the stream. If a world has an unlockable call like that one, then it'll vary based on whatever animals are in the area. So, for example, since there were a lot of birds around here, then you get the bird call. I know there's there's a manta call that I believe is in the next world, Hidden Forest, because that is the main animal that you see the most. Those gigantic things going around in the air, those are mantas. Now then, Let's see. There are more candles up there on those really high floating islands, but the main attraction that I wanted to show off from coming to this bird's nest area is right through here. This is your first example of an easily accessible seasonal area. Welcome to the Sanctuary Islands. This is the setting of the now discontinued season of Sanctuary that happened during the summer of 2020, an escape from daily civilization. This place will always hold a special, well, place in my heart because the season of Sanctuary was the first in-game season that I ever experienced. And I believe I actually got this game just as the season of Belonging was ending. Or whichever one came before the season of Sanctuary. Normally in secret places like this, reserved for seasons, there would be special spirits all over the place that are marked with orange light. 
usually if that's the case then the quote unquote mini games that you have to play to save the spirits are much harder like for example I believe on this yeah these cliff faces over here are one example for one of the sanctuary spirits, you had to guide the spirit's light all along these cliff faces. And more often than not, you'd fall off and all the way back down where my character is standing right now. It's no fun at all. There are also some spirits that you would be able to find on the bottom of this little island. Or, it's not little at all, but you know what I mean. And, I believe... Yes, this also introduced the concept of the geyser, which, if you stay in it for long enough, will propel your character in a burst of steam. You'll be able to figure out when the geyser is close to bursting by how high up the water is. Look at that! There we go! Isn't it awesome? And there's one more thing that I need to show off in here before we get out of here. I hope I can find it. Aha! There it is! Right over here is a polluted geyser. This was introduced for the Days of Nature special event. As you can see, the water down there is a lot murkier, if that's even a word, compared to the other geysers. Now, I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to clean up this water, because it has been a while. But do know that if you ever interact with murky water like this, it will harm your character. Uh... What? Okay... I'm going to see if I can clip that. Because that's worthy of clipping. That's not supposed to happen normally. That crash was not present in the mobile version. So yeah... That's good to know. If that clip actually saved properly, I will be sure to post it on Twitter after the stream is over. Oh, hold on, excuse me for a second. Okay, there we go. Now then. That is pretty much all I wanted to show off in the Daylight Prairie, thankfully. So, we are back here in the hub world at last. And as you can see, there are six main worlds here. Plus a seventh world that is extremely difficult. Through here... is the Eye of Eden. You need 20 spirits to go through here. And this, this, everybody, is my main goal. I want to go through this final world. I tried going through it once, and not only is it super scary, like Shiny Gamer 70 said, 
It is full of all sorts of hazards, traps, what have you, that can actively damage your avatar. That is another mechanic that I haven't talked about yet. Taking damage. If your Sky Child somehow gets damage dealt to them for whatever reason, that does mean they will lose any winged light that they're carrying. But thankfully, you only lose, like, a couple shards of it. However, you will lose every single cape charge that you've acquired. As you can see on the top screen, I have seven right there. If I were to take damage somehow, I would lose all of those charges. And if I don't recover my winged light back in time, that could mean I would go down in winged light levels. See how it says I'm level 65 right now? Every so often, whenever you collect certain amounts of winged light, you will get an extra cape charge unlocked. Now then, there you go, friend. That should save your cape energy. Now, what else can I talk about? Over here is a little warp that you can take to return to your last save point. This guy right here, I affectionately like to call him the guide. Every so often in one of these worlds, you will have four separate objectives that you need to complete in order to get extra candles. And during the seasons, seasonal events, I should say, the guide will be replaced by whatever seasonal guide is available then, I guess. And the main focus of the hub world is this, the constellation viewer. Whenever you return here, you can, at any point, view whatever worlds you've completed and see if you're missing anything. Like, for example, you can see that there are one, two, yeah, technically three, but for the sake of consistency, two spirits that we missed in the Daylight Prairie. And this also lets me talk about the friends list. Every so often, or I guess not every so often, whenever you want to make friends with a player, first you have to make sure you know what they look like. And to do that, you have to offer your candle. They'll light up yours, and you can press Y once you're near someone you can see and offer a candle to them. And once you've done that, you will lose a candle, but in the process, you'll become friends with whatever player you've chosen. Now let's see if I can demonstrate with one of these mods. Come on. Does anybody want to be my friend? There we go. Now, as you can see, I now know what this this player looks like. So, if I could find him. Where'd they go? There they are. Get back here. Okay, there. As you can see, if I selected that become friends option, I would have to give them a candle, but in the process, we would be able to build our friendship tree. That's what I call it anyway. And you can unlock exclusive expressions that you can only do with your in-game friends. Now I'm gonna see if I can warp to 
one of my other in-game friends to show you what I mean. And another thing, if you want to ever return home quickly, you have to be completely still whenever you're doing it. Alright, let's see if I can find somebody who's online. Oh yeah, if you're wondering why so many of these friends have, like, really nonsense-sounding names, that's all based on the game. Whenever you first make a new friend, if you don't know what their real name is, the game will give you a... How do I put this? A random name for that player. Anyway. Your friend is in an older version of the app. Oh, that's right! So I may not be able to visit any of my mobile friends. Nuts! Oh well. That's fine, I guess. I'll still be able to make friends with you guys, that's for sure. Oh, hold up. There we go. Give you some more of your energy back. You want to be my friend? There we go. How are you doing there? Sometimes it's fun to just interact with other players without even becoming their friend. That is pretty much the essence of interacting with another veteran player. And that brings me to another point. See how short this, this character is? There was a time where I was... Where my avatar, I guess I should say was about as short as they are. Unfortunately, I can't get my character to be that size because that's locked behind a mask that isn't available until World 3. See how it says available in Forest Constellation? That basically means you have to find whatever spirit has that mask in World 3 which is, appropriately titled, The Hidden Forest. You once had a song battle with a random player. Ooh, that's nice, shiny gamer. I've never had that happen before to me, but I can only imagine that it was fun for you. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, player height. There is another way to change the size of your player, your avatar. You can use items called spells, which are obtained by either getting them for free in certain events, or normally there would be a traveler's boat here. That is the official name of it, by the way, the traveler's boat that sometimes offers you free spells. So, for example, I can use this shrink spell here to make myself as short as that player for 10 minutes. There is also a growth spell that will make your character as tall as I am for 10 minutes. Also, have a good night, Professor. And you're welcome. But, going back to what I was saying about player height, there is one other item that can permanently alter your avatar's height. It's called a resize potion. I don't have any right now, but in order to get 
the resize potions, you just get them like any other spell. They're either in the traveler's boat for 10 candles that you can only get by going to the Eye of Eden, or they sometimes appear for free during seasonal events. Oh wait, you know what? Here. Since you were such a good sport, how about you become my first friend on the Switch? What say you? Come on, don't leave me hanging. You can retract your friend request at any time, by the way. In case the player you're trying to interact with doesn't want to become your friend. You just have to press B. Anyway. I want to get another resize potion at some point so I can make my avatar small again. I liked being small. The way that works is... The smaller your avatar is, the faster they run. It's a nice secret boost that not very many new players know about. Anyway, I think that's about it for the basics of the game. So, to recap, you have to go through each of these six worlds, save as many of the spirits that are in each world as possible. You don't have to unlock every item from them, but it is nice if you want your avatar to look different than the default look. And eventually, you will make it to World 7, the Eye of Eden. And going through that world helps you beat the game. That is the main goal of this game. Get through the Eye of Eden and make your way back to your home in the sky. Now then. Do you guys need me to review anything I've talked about so far? Oh yeah, and you can make friends with other players if you want to. And there are seasonal events that happen every so often. And yeah, that should be it. There's another example of a player that's been playing for a while. Most of his items are from the Christmas event. That happened last year. I believe it was called the Days of Feasting? Welcome, Blue Quartz Dragon. And yes, Sky is out on the Switch right now. It does start at 30 FPS, but you can press plus and select graphics to change it to 60. And if you can't find it in the eShop, try looking under either new releases or indie games. That's my guess. Now, as you can see here, I'm going to go through all of my cosmetic items that I've unlocked. And you can see just how crazy customization can be in this game. All sorts of different masks. Wait, hang on. Hang on. Is there anything you can do without an internet connection? I don't know, honestly. I do know you need a Nintendo account. Because I tried to play this on an alt account and it said I had to link it. But other than that, I don't think so. Okay. Now then, where was I? Different masks. Oh, yeah. This one's from the Season of Prophecy. 
all of these are from the season of assembly. And this is the default. Oh, and welcome Bobble Punk to the stream. The stream is about to end, by the way. I just wanted to show off some of these cosmetic item examples real quick. This jellyfish hair is pretty cool. Although I do like this comb over more. It almost reminds me of my IRL hairstyle. Except I wouldn't wear my hair that long in the front. These are the various capes you can unlock. This one's from the Butterfly Charmer. This one isn't unlocked until World 4. This one's from the Season of Prophecy. And these two, this one and this one, are from the Days of Nature event that happened this year. Have I ever finished this game? No, I haven't. If I'm being perfectly honest, whenever I first visited the Eye of Eden, that scared the heck out of me. I didn't want to return until I had plenty of winged light levels under my belt. Let me show you again. So if I press X here, you can see I'm level 65 right now, and it said the next level is going to be 75. I want to get to level 75 before I return to the Eye of Eden. Also, welcome 1P5M to the stream. What's your question? I'll try my best to answer it. Also, hang on a second. Ugh, curse these allergies. I'm just glad I'm energized enough to stream for you guys. Anyway, while while I wait for 1P5M to type out their question, I'm going to see if I can find someone else to raid. Because I didn't really plan on this stream being very long to begin with. I just wanted to go over the basics of the game to give you guys a starting point. Thing is, Swifty Soft, it's not really debilitating. Also, welcome DJ Sango. It's fine that you're late, but the good news is you're just in time for the raid, which I will do here in a second. Let me read your question, 1P5M. You can't visit one of your mobile friends because it says their version is older. Oh, yeah! Yeah, that's right. I tried to do the same with one of my mobile friends earlier, and a Apparently, there is no known solution yet, so I can't really help you out there. I'm terribly sorry, but I haven't figured that out. I'm pretty much as lost as you are. I don't know of a solution yet. Anyway. Now that that's over, it's finally time for the raid. You probably have to use the same device as the other person. Yeah, that's kind of what I theorized earlier. I mean, it makes sense. Anyway. So yeah, raid time. Yeah, it is about to end, DJ Sango. I do apologize, but I didn't want this stream to be very long anyway. Thankfully... We're gonna get back into the action. We're gonna be raiding...
Starlet Siren. If you guys want a good example of a pro Sky player, Siren is your guy. He is so good at the game. Much better than me. Anyway, I will mention, by the way, for those of you who don't know who Starlet Siren is, he does use male pronouns. So, yeah, there's that. I have seen moments during his streams where new viewers misgender him, so I just want to warn you guys before we go over there, in case anybody has any questions. Now then, here's the link to Siren's stream. Type hashtag tentacle raid in the chat, and I will see you guys over there in a minute or two. Anyway... Thank you guys so much for attending this stream, as I tried my best to explain this game to you. It really does mean a lot. It really does. And, until next time, this is Tentacles signing out. Take care, everybody.